Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors, I'm Dean and in today's video I'll be showing my top 5 tips and tricks that will help you get the most out of the carpet glitch. Now I've been wanting to create this video for quite some time, but recently our community has announced our very first community build challenge. So I thought, hey, what better time than now to get this video out, in hopes that it may inspire or give you some ideas for the type of build that you're trying to create. Now for those of you who are not participating in this challenge or do know quite a bit about the carpet glitch, you still might be interested in this video because we're going to be discussing a lot of things and showing quite a few ideas that you may not have known and hopefully give you some new and fresh ideas for your next settlement build and help you make the carpet glitch your bitch. <laughs> Most everyone already knows what the carpet glitch is and how to do it, but there are quite a few new players that are discovering the joy of building in Fallout 4, and to make this a good tips and tricks video, we need to start with the basics. So for the first tip, we're going to be discussing and answering three main topics. What is the carpet glitch? Why would we need to use it? And is it really a glitch? All right, let's start with what is the carpet glitch? Well, there are quite a few objects in your inventory that can be carpet glitched, but there are a few exceptions. One thing I'm thinking right off the top of my head is there's a couple of vending stations that cannot be carpet glitched. Also, you cannot carpet glitch any item that is snappable. For example, this fence post, this wall, and the electrical conduit pipe that's laying on the floor there. Now the way the carpet glitch works is you need to place an object on top of the carpet and it doesn't matter what kind of carpet it is. Also we'll see here in a minute that other objects can be used in the same manner. So what you'll do is bring your carpet over, we'll use this counter, we'll put it on top of the carpet and now when we move the carpet the counter will go with us and we're able to place this into most anything that we would like to up until the carpet hits the object that you're getting close to. Now to alleviate this all you would need to do is use a second carpet. So we'll go ahead and do two carpets and this couch. Now the second thing is why would we even need to use this? Well, you can get quite a few cool effects by doing it. For example, this couch, when we flip it around, it gives a pretty nice look to something you might be doing. Imagine that over the fireplace that we just built in the last video. Also, here's another good example. We're placing this container over top of the computer to give it a whole new, entirely whole new look and this is something that is great for carpet glitching. You can take multiple objects and create a whole new look by doing it. Alright, now our final question is, is it really a glitch? No, it's not. It's more of an exploit. And the reason that I say that is because you can really use quite a few other objects to do the same thing. For example, this footlocker on top of this conduit. If I move the footlocker around and it pops up, I know that it's setting on top of the conduit. And then I can target the conduit, move it anywhere I want, and get it to go through whatever object that I want it to go through. This is how I actually built the drop pin box for our bowling alley. Here's another good example. I'm putting this footlocker on a floor and I'm getting the same result. The object is going through another object. Also, it doesn't have to be items that you can place on top of other items. For example, I'm attaching this light to a conduit I got floating in the air. If I set it on the floor, the conduit still turns green and the light would be under the floor. 
but if I attach it to another conduit, now I've got the light penetrating through an object. This works with quite a few things. Another example is this picture. I've attached a uh, conduit connector to the back of the picture, and I can set the picture on the wall. This now makes the uh, conduit wire connector go through the wall. This is a great tip to help hide wiring in your settlement. How does the carpet glitch work? Well, if you choose to use the carpet glitch, there's a few things that you really need to know. First of all, quite a few objects can just set anywhere on the carpet. For example, we have this couch in the middle setting over the carpet, and we're moving it around just fine. But if we use this table, it's not going to work the same way. We're actually going to have to find a spot of the table that's setting on the carpet. Once again, the way you can tell if an object is setting on the carpet is by the way that object pops up. Then you know it's setting on there. Now, if you do this, you might think to yourself, well, that doesn't look very good with that carpet right there, and you want to store it. And of course, as soon as you do, the object is going to drop down into the floor, or the ground, or anything else that you've got it setting on. And this works with any object that you're using the carpet glitch on. Now, there are a couple of useful things that you can do with this, how it drops down. For example, this container that we're going to place over this computer. Once we store the carpet, the container is going to drop down, and now it's exposing the keys to the computer, and it has a pretty good look to it. Now, let me briefly try to explain why this happens. All of these objects were created from a wire mesh. That way, they could attach the polygons to them. Polygons are basically what gives us the image of what the object is. For example, a floor, a wall, this foot locker, and so on. But it's the wire mesh that we really need to talk about. Whenever you are storing an object that you're using as the carpet glitch, it cannot register the very first part of the wire mesh. It needs a split second for the game to recalculate where the wire meshes are at because the objects were not meant to be inside of one another. Therefore, it's not going to drop directly onto the floor. What it's going to do is it's going to drop to the next closest part of the mesh. For example, I've lifted this wall up off the floor pretty decent, and we're going to store this foot locker. Once we do, the other foot locker that we glitched into the wall now dropped down to the bottom of this mesh that's part of the wall. And this works for everything. Now, if we use this floor and we bring it over to uh, the wall doing the same thing, it's below the mesh. But watch what happens. It actually pops up because that's the closest mesh for it to land on. And that's why these objects drop up or drop down when you store the object that you're using to do the carpet glitch with. Now, before we move on to tip number three, I'd like to show this once again, but do it in a more extreme way. I've carpet glitched a pike pole, brought it up to a floor that's about one story above the ground, stored the carpet, and the pike pole has dropped but it's gone much farther than the thickness of the floor. The reason is is because this particular object sticks through the bottom of the floor and the ground is the closest mesh that it can register and read to land on. We'll re-carpet our pike pole, we'll add in a floor, we'll take the carpet and the pike pole back up to the top floor and we'll try it again. Now when we store the carpet this time, the pike pole's going to actually land on the floor that's below it. Now the reason that I'm showing this is to kind of warm you up for the final tip of this video. We've got a couple other tips to see before then, but I'm going to actually show you guys and gals how we can control how these objects drop. 
seamless rugs, carpets, and mats. Now, let's say you have several objects that you're wanting to carpet glitch at the same time, and you're going to need a lot of carpets or rugs or mats to do it. Well, when you stack them on top of one another, it creates this stair step type pattern. Well, there is a way that you can put these objects together to create one flat surface instead of having the stair-stepped effect. In the beginning of this video, you may have noticed this clip where I had about 13 or 14 mats carpeted together and they were completely flat. What I wanted to do was carpet glitch some of these crates on top of it so that I could group select it and take it into my build. And from here we can see that all of those crates are completely flat on top because we don't have the stair stepped effect. Now it really works good for this but a couple of other things too. Here in our enterprise build I've used this tip to do the mats of the floor and the mats on the ceiling and you can see there is no stair step pattern. For this to work the first thing that you need to do is find a slightly higher in elevation area in your settlement. For example here I have put my first mat on this little clump of dirt and then I've connected all the other mats to it from this point. Now we're doing our tips and tricks in the vault and it's pretty flat here. So what I'm going to do is use this floor to get the same effect. I'll put the first mat down and because we know about the bounding boxes around all of the objects, we're going to spin the mat, rug or carpet until we find the sweet side and then we can bring it together, not set it on top but kind of float it out in front of the other object. And you can see there's a little bit of a space in between these mats. Now when we put a few of these down and we pick them up, we'll see that these mats are completely flat. But they're still rugged together from the first mat. And this works with all of the objects in the carpet section. This is a great way to make as long as you want it to be all of your carpets completely flat. Here I'm using a different style of carpet so that you can see that it works the same way. I'm just searching around a little bit for that sweet spot so that I can start laying them out. Now this does take a little bit of practice to kind of see what side of the carpet is where it's going to work the best. But you can see right there that these carpets are actually setting inside of one another. You can actually see the line of the first carpet through the carpet that we're trying to place down. And that's telling me that these are completely flat and there is no stair step pattern. I really enjoy this tip. Uh, use this trick a lot and I hope you ladies and gentlemen try it out. It'll really change the way that you build objects or place objects together in your settlement. Carpet Glitch versus Group Select. Which one is best? Well, this is really kind of hard to say because it'll depend upon your circumstances and what you're trying to do. Both ways have their positive and negative effects when you're using them. But I say, hey, why do we got to choose? Why can't we use them both together? And you can. Here I've got a metal post, I've group selected a rug, and I'm still getting the same rug glitch effect by doing that. And it doesn't matter if I'm using one, two, three, or multiple carpets or rugs, it still works exactly the same way but there is one major thing that you can expect to happen when doing this. Because rugs will generally only set on floors or ceilings, it's quite difficult to get them high in the air in case you have an object that you're wanting to place further up into the air. So by using group select, it makes it a lot easier to get these objects up to a height that you need them to be. Also, this tip will help us transition into the next segment 
where we'll see this being used a few different times. How to control the way an object drops when you're using the carpet glitch. There are a few ways to do this, but I've chosen the top three tips that I commonly use when I'm doing this. First of all, I'd like to make this footlocker land on top of the floor. So to do that, I'll use a quarter floor. I'll set it over the carpet, target the carpet, it pops up and sets on top of the quarter floor. Now when I store the carpet, the container will drop right down and set on top of the floor. Also, you can use the quarter floor for the same effect. You don't actually need the carpet to do this. So if we place the footlocker on top, store the quarter floor, once again the footlocker drops down to the top of the floor. That's the closest mesh that it can register and read. Now the second way is for objects that are a little bit higher and I want to control how high or how low they actually drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these small letters that we can find in the sign category. Because every object has a mesh around it, we can use these to make the object drop to a certain point. And I'll put it on the back side of this wall where it's not really visible. Now what you need to do is place it at least the thickness of a floor below the object that you wish to drop. That way it gives it plenty of time to register the mesh of the number. And as you can see, once we stored the carpet, it dropped right down and it is sitting on the number. Also, if you target the number and you move it and you can place it anywhere that the number will turn green, you can get a whole lot of extra effects by doing this. We've used this tip and trick quite often with all types of objects, lights included. Now I'd like to show this tip once again in a different scenario so that we can really see just how useful this tip really is. What I'd like to do is place this oil lamp inside of this metal post to create a taller oil lamp. But when we store the carpet, there's nothing for the lamp to fall or drop on except the floor. So it drops completely down and this is not the look that we're trying to get. So let's recarpet our oil lamp. Let's add on one of these numbers and try it again. Now it really doesn't matter what wall mounted object that you use. This will really work the same way. So you could use pictures, other signs, etc. But once we recarpet the oil lamp, bring it up, line it up, and store our carpet, now the oil lamp will drop down and set on the number. Also, because it is setting on the number, if we target it, we can move it around anywhere that we want to once again. So let's say like you want to put this on maybe this street light over here. If the number will turn green, that oil lamp will go into it. Also, what's nice about it being on the number is that you can position the lamp anywhere on the post that you would like it to be. For the third way to do this tip, we're actually going to use these round containers. Now, if you'll notice, at the bottom of the container, it's kind of beveled inwards like a funnel. So if we tried to use the numbers or letters like we did in the last segment, it's just not going to work. The reason is, is because the bottom of the container is not sticking out far enough to actually land on the letter. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the mesh of the ground to help us out. So we group selected the first container, dropped it down into the ground. But if it's too far in the ground, when you go to store the carpet, the top of the container is the closest mesh. And it's just going to pop up. So you want to make sure to have plenty of the container that you put into the ground sticking up. That way when you store the carpet, it actually drops down and not up. Now we can go ahead, group select our object, bring it up out of the ground, and What's really cool about this is because that container is sitting on top or in the other one, it's all one piece and it can be easily moved anywhere that you want to move it. 
Also, another thing that's pretty cool about this is you can once again carpet glitch the bottom container if you want to. And both objects will go into whatever you're trying to put it into. This is an excellent tip for creating like effects or borders around things. This is the tip that I used quite a bit when we built the computer room or the bridge of the Enterprise. All right, now I know that this video said five tips and tricks for the carpet glitch, but just because you stayed to the end of this video, I have two more very special tips that I'd like to share just for you. Here we are at our lunchbox factory. We've got one long conveyor belt system, but we actually need it to work in two parts. One conveyor belt needs to be able to be turned on or off, but still be connected in one long conveyor belt system. So when I turn on the power, we can see all three of these conveyor belts are working. And the only one that we need working is the one that the power is hooked up to. This one here needs to be on its own set of power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one of these conveyors out of the way. If we can, it's a little tight here. And I'm going to go ahead and get a carpet out. Actually, I'm going to use a mat. I'm going to place it underneath where this conveyor would be. I'm going to put the conveyor belt back and then I'm going to take out the middle conveyor belt. Now when I click on the conveyor belt that's over the carpet, it pops up and I'm going to pull it forward just a little bit. Now when I snap back in the middle conveyor belt, it's still part of the entire conveyor belt system, but it's no longer working because it's not connected to the conveyor belt that has power. So now we'll disconnect the power from the one. We'll put the power on the one we just put in. And you can see these two conveyor belts are working, but the third one is not. This is a great example of how you can manipulate these manufacturing objects by just using a carpet. For our final tip for today's video, let's say that you've got a gap in a floor between two floors or even a floor and a wall. It happens quite a bit, especially if you're using concrete, vanilla, barn, and warehouse objects all together in the same build. Or let's say that you're trying to create a curved or round structure, and this is your floors. You really wish that you could get these floors to go inside of one another, but you know we can't. But what would you say if I told you that we could actually get these floors to go inside of one another by using a carpet? I'll place a carpet down in front of a board we're going to take out. I'll use a quarter floor to mark it. And then once I take the floor out, if I click on the quarter floor, it actually pops up off the floor the thickness of the carpet. Now we can go ahead and highlight these floors to drop them down onto the floor where we need it to be. We can go back over, get our floor that we used as a marker, and there you go. This floor is actually now penetrating in to the other two floors, and we have one smooth, complete surface. We don't have any of that stair step up and down thing. This is a really great tip if you're trying to integrate floors into one another. Another great thing about this tip is that it doesn't just work only on floors. It works with quite a few other objects as well. For example, once we put our walls up and then we go to snap our ceilings in, guess what? That's right, they're going to snap inside of one another as well. The reason that this is working is because the walls are snapped to our floors and they're going to mimic exactly what the floors are doing. The reason that the floors are integrated into one another is because we have lifted one of the floors up as thick as a carpet, which has offset the floor to the other ones on the side. This is why sometimes we can get barn floors to snap inside or around vanilla floors. And can you believe that we did all of this and everything else in today's video all by using 
one little measly carpet. All right, everybody, thank you all very much for stopping in, hanging out with me. I hope that today's tips and tricks inspired you and gave you some ideas for your next settlement bill. And just like always, until next time, everybody, please stay safe and peace.